was over a campfire about a year and a half ago. I was sitting with a friend of mine, and he had a machine in his house that turned his local waste, all the plastic that they used in their kitchen, into about two or three hours of power in the evening for his family. And I said, what? i got to see this machine. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're telling me you can turn plastic into electricity and that it works. And we were sitting there at the... Uh, at the campfire and I walked back into his, his back room there and he had this sort of big, leaky, dangerous looking machine. It was about this big and about that wide and it was easily one of the most beautiful things I had ever seen in my whole life. And I thought, wait, 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 wait. There's this big art gathering that happens every year. I don't know if anyone's ever heard of it. It's called Burning Man. So in South Africa, we have a version of Burning Man that is called Africa Burn. So I said, well, why don't we take this contraption you have here that just looks like the most amazingly functional steampunk sculpture I've ever seen in my freaking life and turn it into something that we can take around and show people that you can rethink what you believe you know about plastic. So this is us at Durban Harbor with the city of Durban doing cleanups with um, surfers and local community organizations and, and groups because communities are already seriously involved in making sure that they are feeling like they're doing something about this, but they're lost. People need more active participation. And I think that when we brought this to people, we did not realize not only that they would enjoy it so much, but that we would. Yeah, so the machine's inside of here. And that machine, we drive it all over Southern Africa. We've, we've done about 35 shows now on the road in the last year. So this is uh, Pops Pretorius. He's the inventor. He's sitting there with a bunch of school kids up in the Northern Cape. But right here, this is us out on the road, talking to people, getting kids involved, getting people excited about changing their own waste into a resource that they can capture today. There's the dung beetle. It farts fabulous balls of fire from the gas that we create. We've got a, we've got a shredder that's shaped like a dinosaur. We've, we've got a dung beetle, of course, because dung beetles, what do they do? Dung beetles go out there and they pick up all the shit that nobody wants anymore, and they turn it into something useful, and they keep that, that loop, the loop of energy within our natural environment in Southern Africa, they keep that going. And you can get people involved and active bringing plastic to the party so that they don't pay. They just bring a kilogram of plastic, we fire that into the reactor, and that is the kind of positive messaging that is so missing in the environmental movement. This, this particularly small machine uses 20 kilos of plastic, and it can pump out about four and a half hours. But then before we do that often, what we're using that sound to do is, is educate people and talk to them. So we go to the students in schools all around South Africa, and we get them to, to get involved with their own recycling programs, prepare the plastic for us, we go to visit them. And then what happens is they then got to feed the monster and then press the button to fire off the big fiery farts. And you get everybody actively involved in this narrative and suddenly they see it. So here we are at a school in the Northern Cape in May. This is one of our artists. So we have artists from around the world come and join us. Every single one of the schools that we go to has an active recycling group. They're seriously involved in looking at their own futures through the lens of less plastic, less pollution. We want our community to be better. And that's, that's exciting. So one of the things that we've come up with is a system that allows us to turn plastic into energy and use that energy to recycle the high-value plastics. And we do that because Plastic has doubled the energy density of coal. Now you're starting to think, okay, 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 wait, you guys are burning the plastic, climate change gases, you've got all these problems related to the possibility of dioxin in the atmosphere. We do not want to burn our plastic into the atmosphere so that we can get a little energy of it so we don't have to see it on the beach every day. That is not what is happening here. So you can pick up this machine, you can dump it where the plastic is, and you can turn that plastic into electricity because you can vaporize it into those gases and burn those gases in a generator. Those gases, number one, are 17 times cleaner than natural gas that comes out of the ground that you would burn in a generator. Number two, the two liquid fuels that come out of it are twice or three times cleaner than the best clean diesel here in Germany. So what we're getting out of it is fossil fuels. They do 
create greenhouse gases, but at a far less number than their cousins that we pull out of the ground. Plus, we're getting rid of the plastics problem. This machine right here can do between 200 and 1,000 kilos a day. So when we look at these machines, most of the big ones, the, those 17 that I said are in working nature all around the planet, those are huge machines, about half the size of this entire building. We are only one of two companies in the world that are creating machines that are this size. You can plunk down and you can turn people's plastic at the point where you find it into energy that those people can use today. You know, if you look at the way in which art can change people's minds, we would never have got to where we are today if we had just made this machine and started trying to sell it. It was the art that made, it was the access point for people to befriend the technology. If you're in a mountainous community in Eastern Germany, it's really hard to recycle. It's really hard to send all your plastic away because it's so light and bulky. So plastic has a problem because even if you can unleash its energy potential, it's just not dense enough to justify trucking it or, or really shipping it anywhere in the world. These will be placed at recycling plants and municipal dumps in isolated communities where people can then bring their plastic and get people involved in their community through the dung beetle project. This is our, our offshoot Scarab Tech. And we will talk to people, get them involved, get schools involved, and then get kids like Yashna to actively pursue their parents to make sure that they are recycling and that their plastic is going to a safe disposal site that is managed by one of our Scarab Tech beetles. If we can go out and do this, starting from a conversation around a campfire two years ago, just think what you guys can do.